Anyway, some of our new inventory in, we got the 1966 Ford Fairlane 500 in nutmeg over black. I love that color. Mm -hmm. nutmeg. Beautiful. Now, this thing. Have you seen this thing? Yes, I have. It's a beautiful. 501 cubic inch yeah. stroker, Tremec T TKO 600 manual, Willwood brakes, upgraded suspension, Morrison chassis. This thing is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The amount of time and effort and money. And trust me. For the asking price for this, you could not duplicate this thing if you tried. I mean, that's what people fail to realize is a lot of these prices, they say, oh, that price is too much. Well, you know, the $50,000 car, the guy spent 100 building mm -hmm. it yep. or more. No, and you see that all the time. And people say, oh, I, I saw a car on Meekum or Barrett-Jackson or one of the sites, and it sold for, you know, 200000 And my car's as nice as that. Well, A, no, it's not. And B, the guy who sold it for two hundred might have had 300 in it. You don't know. So just because you see it doesn't mean that it's it means anything in relative terms. It doesn't mean that they're making a hundred thousand dollar profit. Right, right. So it's always, always more to build a car than to buy it built. Mm -hmm. And this car is spectacular. Really, one of the nicest yeah. Fairlanes we've had. Yeah, it really is. And and that's a neat body style too. I mm -hmm. love the Fairlane body style. So uh, if you get a chance, you can check out all of our inventory, classicautomall.com. Um, how about this one, the '68 Camaro convertible? Have you seen this one with the six cylinder? Sure. No. <laughs> such a winner. Oh, this is the one that looks like fact, like came out of the factory. Yeah. It's Great car. Yeah. Factory yeah, fresh. Yeah. Matador red over red. Uh, 250 cubic inch inline six for a Camaro convertible. <laughs> and a two speed. And a two speed power glide. It's incredible. It's incredible. This is the way they, people bought them as daily drivers. They I mean, were, it was a, what they called a secretary's mm -hmm. car. The, the, the Thunderbird was like that. And the Mustangs with the six cylinders were like that. And not to, <coughs> Excuse me. Diminish the secretary. Sorry, I didn't hit my cough. <laughs> um, but that's what they were called because they were they were not it, it wasn't being bought like uh, a lot of the guys in the era were buying them for their you know high performance. High they wanted the fastest, baddest, mm -hmm. biggest. Uh, the 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 ladies back then wanted the look of the Mustang or the Camaro, but they didn't necessarily care about the big motor in it. And some of them even cared about fuel mileage back in the '60s. So. Uh, this thing is pretty amazing, though. Uh, it does, it, it's surprising because most of these that you see, you don't see. You know why? Because the guy's going to buy this car and put a 396 in it and do all the Craig rest SSTs of yeah, and, and all the, the mm -hmm. mods that you do. Yep. Because it's a prime candidate mm -hmm. for that. You wouldn't do that on a car that came with a big motor and had matching numbers and all that stuff. But one that came with this type of motor or has a replacement motor and nobody knows where the mm -hmm, original motor mm -hmm. is. And that's a perfect candidate for a resto mod or, you know, some kind of interpretation of that. Well, I hope the new owner will keep it just as is, but I, that's, I, that's not my choice, I but it, they it is too. perfect. It's really a museum piece. It's like getting rid of your dog and you want to make sure it goes to a good home, <laughs> right? <laughs> just you want the car to go to that's a good true. home. Well, so the other new inventory, the 1999 Plymouth, 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 <laughs> Plymouth Prowler convertible. Oh, yeah. Prowler yellow over charcoal black. But this has the, lamp. they call it the Lamborghini doors. They're not really called that. Right? Scissor doors or Scissor Lambo doors. doors, yeah. They open up. If uh -huh. you can. I'm on radio, I'm doing the That's motion right. of, of up. But um, it's really, this thing has got a lot of cool touches to it. The, the doors like that, the LED underbody lighting. Um, and, of course, these things were pretty interesting cars. I mean, they were... Um, a lot of people felt they were underpowered uh, mm -hmm. when they came out uh, and, you know, hoped that there would be a small V8 in them. And, of course, they didn't. Uh, they had a 3.5 liter V6 with a four-speed automatic. But a uh, very cool-looking car and a retro rod-looking car and all the looks of, of a 1930s hot rod with all the reliability of a new thing, almost a resto mod factory built, mm -hmm. uh, if you will. Uh, but this one's really cool. That's... They're only made, I think, 600 of them in Prowler Yellow, mm -hmm. which is the color that this one is in, and it's really a cool car. Also— And, and I may say, yes. like many of our owners, this owner happens to be super meticulous. I, oh, couldn't, yeah. fi I couldn't find a flaw on this car, right. really, on the paint or chrome, and he's got a lot of chrome touches in there and, right. for show and stuff. It's neat. Uh, some other new inventory that we didn't get to before we had Kevin on the show is the 2014— Lotus Evora S. How cool is that car? Motorsport green metallic over black. 44,000 actual miles. So it's just getting broken in. Yeah. I mean, that's not That's a driver. That's I mean, a driver. It's a good car. <laughs> and you know, those are supercharged Toyota engines. The mm -hmm. 3.5 liter V6. Can't go wrong there. with that. Six speed manual. Um, this one is just really a cool. And of course, they have such great names. They had the Europa, the Exide, Elise. The Elise. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about making it the Xera, the a spree, Ethos, a spree, a spree. I guess E yeah. is their thing. E clat. Remember there was yeah, an old, yeah, oh yeah, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. From back in the way back in yep. the days. 
And uh, what else? Very cra other, crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think so. it's all of them. I think we've <laughs> named every single Lotus model. <laughs> Esprit was the one that most people are familiar That's with. That's right. They would, you would see a, if, if you put Lotus in, or if Lotus was in the dictionary, it would have the picture of the Esprit. I, I think we had one here a couple years ago. We did. Yeah. We absolutely did. And of course, mm -hmm. they used the Esprit in that James Bond movie, uh was it Live and Let? No, not Live and Let Die. It was. Remember who yeah, you're Mr. asking here? <laughs> yeah, that's right, Mister Non Movie Guy. Uh, but anyway, the Lotus uh, uh, Evora is beautiful re car. Really, really, and it's the S model, so it's got a little more power. Mm -hmm. uh, also in uh, 1958, MG MGA Roadster, R British Racing Green over Black. It's an older restoration, but it's held up well. And these are just such fun cars to drive. They're they're different than an MGB, like a lot of people are familiar with and would see that were built all the way into the 70s. I guess in the 80s they yeah. built mm -hmm. those. Um, the MGA was a different car. It was lower to the ground. It was it was more sporting, even though it may not have been fast, fast. Mm -hmm. It felt like it was fast. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're lower, the lower the, your center of gravity to the road is, uh, the faster and, and more exciting the car can be, even if it's not going as fast as a car with higher center of gravity right. and all that. But this one's got uh, a light new leather interior. It's an inline four with a four-speed manual. Uh, it's got the trust certificate, which is kind of like, uh, I guess the British version of a build sheet, if you will. It, it comes from the manufacturer, tells mm. us about what the car was born with, what the engine number was, and all that. You can get it on Rolls Royces and Jaguars and MGs, and I'm sure other British yep. cars have those as well, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, certainly nice to see some kind of documentation of what the car was or wasn't uh, when it was born, <coughs> because a lot of people don't know. Uh, also uh, in is a 72 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Now, you know, you talk about a car... That wasn't loved for a long time. Long time. Nobody <laughs> cared for those things. That they were body big, style. Yeah. They were big and long mm -hmm. and bulky. And, you know, they you know, 351 in them, which probably could have used a little more power back in the day. But I don't know. These things have really come on strong as of late. And the Mach 1s are just really popular now. And they don't, they don't stick around long. So I, I don't mm -hmm. suspect that this one in bright red over black will last very long. It's got the Deluxe Marty Report, which tells you everything again. This like the trust certificate, what it was built with. Uh, numbers matching Cleveland uh, 351 cubic inch V8 and uh, factory air conditioning. So, beautiful. Which beautiful. was nice, especially in that big car with a big back window. Giant. Giant. And that's why they put the slats on the back. Uh -huh. you remember the... Yeah, the, yeah. The louvers. Louvers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, to keep the heat out. Right, right. <laughs> because it was just a big flat surface mm -hmm. of magnifying glass. We still have a few of our barn finds left for sale here. Um, just understand that they probably don't have keys, battery, or a title. <laughs> but other than that, and they don't run. They're cool. <laughs> but they're cool. Otherwise. But they're very cool. And they're, you know, very... Some of them are more worthy than others. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've down. We had 400 barn finds when we started January 1st of 18. Mm. We took 100 out that my partner said I never want to sell, so no sense in having them there. And then we're down to about 80 mm -hmm. uh, of the ones left. So we've sold 150 or 60 or 70 uh, of these barn finds. And of course, you know, usually people are buying them because they have another one just like it, and they need parts, and it's cheaper to buy a whole car than it is sometimes the the parts. Yeah, you go buy a couple of bumpers. And you could spend a thousand bucks. You might be able to buy a car with a couple of bumpers for five hundred dollars. Yeah. I worked at a couple of car dealers, and there, I, I, one of the wholesalers said it's cheaper. Cars are cheaper by the dozen. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, if you think about it, you if you could if you could disassemble these cars and sell them that way, you could probably sell them for a lot more money. Yeah, a lot well, of them. but one sold as a, it's going to be used as a, a display at a coffee shop or yeah. something like that. That yeah. pickup truck yeah. was so cool. I yeah. thought, what a great idea! Yeah. An old fifties pickup truck with lots no, of patina. No, was there way earlier. Than no, that. it was it was yeah. it was thirty twenties to twenties or thirties. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I took yeah. a picture of it because it had uh um what's the green moss growing moss. in the in the back bed because it, it had been sitting for so <laughs> oh, it was wow. really cool oh, like what's rock. that what's that mossy green stuff yeah oh it's moss know. yeah moss.